Now this is the next little part that we're going to work on. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to, and this is something I'm sure a lot of people will find funny. In, let me just back this up a little bit. Back in the day when we used to paint a lot of 750 Hondas, the side covers were plastic and you would be painting with lacquer. The lacquer thinner would melt the plastic. And I thought as years went by, basically the, the plastics got better and better and they didn't have as much tendency to melt. Some of them still do. Now, in the modern, the modern motorcycles, and it's, it's especially bad with some of the mirrors that I've done for Luciano, they, one would melt and one wouldn't. Some of the older bike parts, this is off an 09 650 Kawasaki, but what I wanted to show was, it, you take this part off the bike, and I've spent a lot of time, I took kerosene outside, I didn't want to put this on video, and a brush, kerosene did all down, blew it off with an air hose, brought it inside, about six passes with this in the sink with the water running. That takes care of that. Come in with the prep saw, or prep wall, whatever. You never can tell about these products. I like M600 the best, but M600 is getting impossible to find in a body shop, so this is the second choice. And when we're all done, now I want to save this little step for last. What happens consistently with plastic? This has a little bit of a texture. It's got a little bit, I don't know what you would even call that. It's, it's like a flat paint. It's not even flat paint. They, these bike companies don't even paint this stuff. They just send, send it to you like that, flat plastic. Well, as long as I'm going to be addressing this, I want to make it shiny, of course. I like the look of shiny parts. I like especially shiny black. Especially this bike is basically all black. Now, at the point, and I wanted to make this point really clear, at the point that you know you don't have any grease on here, whether you've done it with simple green or prep ball, now you can take some good old-fashioned SOS. This is made to etch and scuff the surface, and I'm going, to, I'm going to do this in a condensed way, and I'll do most of this off camera, of course, because otherwise I'll be hearing about how long these videos go, but... Maybe some of that will change now that we can do a little basic editing. Anyway, the once that's scuffed, trick number two. Well, actually more than two tricks. But the reason I'm going through this is a lot of people, and boy, I'll bet I've had a hundred parts over the years. People have come over with a part that they've painted. And right in the middle of it, uh, there's a bubble in the paint. Paint didn't stick. Then when you go to Touch it with your finger, a big paint piece chips out. You can minimize the chance that that's going to happen by doing two things. Number one, the cleaning. The soap and SOS is really good soap. Also, this is 400 sandpaper. Ordinary 400 wet and dry. And I'll just do this little spot because we're going to, we're trying to keep these videos to, to some reasonable time. But if I can just show the etching part of it, the point is, Paint adheres in two ways. It adheres, number one, by its chemical composition. The chemicals in the paint at a molecular level go in and melt the paint underneath it or the substrate, or in this case, the plastic. It's a molecular action, a chemical action, whatever you want to call it. It is probably a real super scientific way. Kevin Cameron could tell you about that. I'm not Kevin Cameron, but but Kevin Cameron isn't windy either, so <laughs> thank God he isn't. Imagine having two of me. Anyway, what I've done here is etched the part. Now, even though it's plastic, what I'm going to try to do, and it's, it's going, I'm going to try to show how to stack the deck in your favor. Because once that part is etched, what it means is at a, at a very molecular level, it's got little ridges in it, little scratches. That's going to allow the paint to mechanically bond and chemically bond. But also, once this is totally sanded, and I can't paint today, it's pouring rain out there. So once I get that part, I wanted to share this too. Years and years and years ago, in the days of painting 750 side covers and whatever, years ago anyway, there was other products beside this. I don't remember what they were, but there would be something you could spray on to promote. It's an adhesion promoter, they call it. 
what it does, it's the same as self-etching primer. It chemically etches. Now what I'm going to do, because this part, of course, being down by the chain, it's going to take a beating. I'm going to be wiping it off a lot. So this product is called Bulldog. I'm sure it's it's something you can buy. You actually could buy it in AutoZone, I think. Any body shop supply place. Even if you don't have an account, you can just walk in and buy it. It's again, I don't even remember what we paid for this. This is a couple of years old. This one's half empty. But what this does, it it stacks the deck in favor of that your paint is going to stick to the plastic. Now, a lot of times, the paint sticks fine when you paint it. And everything's good and you're happy and everybody's happy and all of a sudden one day a little stone hits this or chip or in this case it'll take a real beating and then it's like saran wrap a big chunk the size of a quarter comes off or something <laughs> because lay, way down deep you didn't get that that bond that adhesion so what I'm suggesting if you follow this whole routine in a preparation for painting this and probably if, if it ever stops raining and snowing and slushing, we'll get to paint this soon. But these are some of my little winter projects that I use. I try to, because we have eight motorcycles, I try to take one and upgrade. And whichever parts have taken the most beating, these are six, seven years old, seven, seven years, six years old. Anyway, things take a beating and I call it refreshing them. Putting a new finish on this, not a big deal. We're not going to bike shows. We're not doing any of that. But it's just nice to have a nice shiny bike and I've always it's always annoyed me whenever you wipe this part off this flat black it wipes off like wiping a piece of sandpaper when it's shiny beautiful so anyway my suggestion is if you have never had any of this if you're gonna do some painting especially plastic and what you spoke what you're supposed to do is put a light coat on read the can you wait a few minutes put another light coat on the one thing don't do is try to paint the part with this if you get a run in this, it's a mess. It just makes a mess. Two light coats, I think five or ten minutes apart. Probably, not probably, it's definitely in there. We'll do that off camera. We'll do that tomorrow probably. But I'm going to use the rest of the day to sand this part down. Get this part prepped. Now, the other thing in doing all this, this motorcycle work, or it doesn't even matter if it's a model plane or whatever, a part that you're a guitar. We've done guitars, of course. And the prepping of the part to get it to where it's immaculately clean, it's sanded, it's etched, and it's ready for either the bulldog or primer. In this case, what I'm gonna to try to do, I'm gonna to try to paint the black urethane right on top of this. And if it, if for some reason, is another great little trick. If you paint, if and you really, in essence, you really should prime this. Well, I don't wanna prime it because it makes the paint thicker and thicker. If I don't have to prime it. If I get this clean enough, I can eliminate the priming step. This will be my primer. But what is going to happen to this, I want to have this buffed out before I put it back on a bike shiny. Those side panels we just did are just the jewelry. So one step at a time. So when the springtime comes and it's riding season, again, I have five or six little parts that are nice and shiny instead of this is what the factory sends you, the flat black thing. And it, it aggravates me. Now, I know it's personal. It's, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder. It's like, who likes anchovies and who likes sardines? I don't like either one, by the way. But I don't like the look of flat black parts. And I see these beautiful motorcycles, ah, whatever one you think's the most beautiful. And right in the middle of it, here's some flat black thing. It's, ah. And I always think, well, you just could take that part off and paint it. It looks so nice. Anyway. We have other projects we're going to be working on very soon. This is what I call a filler project. We're waiting for Vlad to get the matching paint for the Bomoda. We'll get that thing moving along. But in the meantime, uh, knowing how to prep a part. Now, what's nice about this? If you, for instance, don't have, a sp have spray equipment and paint and guns and everything, and you did the, the prep on this, and you come over to the shop with this part, two hours later, you'll be leaving with a part. If I got to do all this preparation work, it may, it may take two months. You never know. Anyway, this is a little tip of the day. We try to pass on information. The purpose of all our videos is to pass on information. Nobody's paying me. You notice there's no commercial. Thank God nobody's paying me. I'd have to advertise adult diapers.